<laughs> yeah, so um, in August, I just came back from the minister's gathering uh, just last week in Canada, which was wonderful. And in August, I went to, I get to do all these cool minister things. In August, I went to a gathering at a Silomar. How many have been to a Silomar? Yeah, so for years, for like 40 plus years, Science of Mind, ministers, practitioners, and congregants have been gathering at Asilomar, which is a retreat center on the coast of Monterey. Absolutely beautiful. And they stopped holding them there, but they decided to bring it back in August, and so I got to go there. And, um, and one of the things that inspired me to create the talk titles for this month was that Ernest Holmes, his last sermon there, called The Sermon by the Sea, and, uh, and so what I decided to do is take passages from that sermon and tie it into every week this month. Yeah, and so, sound good? Yeah, and so this is, this is the first passage. Okay, what happened? Uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, yeah, so the first passage is this. Find me one person who is for something and against nothing who is redeemed enough not to condemn others out of the burden of their soul, and I will find an exalted human being. Mm. So just think about this for a moment in your own life. What areas are, do you find yourself that you're against something as opposed to being for something? Just think about that for yourself. You know, we, we so often focus on what we're against. We get caught in the complaining. We get caught in the things that don't work. We get caught up in thinking about what's missing or what needs to be fixed or what needs to be changed. Do we not? Am I the only person that does this? Okay, I'm a minister, yes, but I still get caught up in that. Yeah. And, and so thinking about this idea of what are we for? What are we for? You know, it's become so acceptable in our society to, to move into that place of, of judgment and criticism. Facebook is a wonderful place for this. <laughs> yes, yes. Just really criticism. Yeah, some people have pulled themselves off of Facebook altogether because of that. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with posting things on Facebook, but sometimes we can get caught up in that. And... And, and using it as a platform to say how we feel about something and not always recognizing the impact of that. Because, you know, whatever we focus on expands. Yes, we know this. So if we're focused on what needs to be changed, what needs to be fixed, sharing opinions, sharing harsh judgments, how does that impact us? It has an impact on our energetic system. It has an impact on us emotionally. It has an impact on us physically. So the more that we focus on what we are for, that also has an impact on us. Does it not? Mm -hmm. That also, yes. Now I'm not saying to not be against anything. Please don't hear that. That is not at all what I'm saying. Because many things have, many changes have been made in our society and our history because someone stood up and said, no more. No more. So I am not saying there is anything wrong with that at all. At all. But it's also being responsible for the impact that it has on your life. And just noticing that and how much time is spent in that world of what we are against versus what we are for. Because our, it's all about our energy. I, uh, the quote that you gave for Mother Teresa is the same quote that I chose. Yes. yes. So it's a powerful quote. Yes, it's a powerful quote. And because she says, you know, I, I am not going to stand and participate in an anti-war demonstration. But if you show me a peace rally, you tell me about a peace rally, I will be there for that. And the reason that's so powerful is because she understood, she understood the energy that when we participate in those things, that energy gets not only infused into us, but what energy are we sending out when we are focused on what we don't want? And we can get so riled up and so focused on that to the point where that energy is actually getting infused and feeding what we are against, even more so. 
Yeah, so she understood the power of our thoughts. She understood the power of our energy. Yeah. And so Ernest Holmes talked about our thoughts and the power of our thoughts. And it's not about focusing on every little thought we have, but it's what is our predominant thoughts. So I want you to think about that. What is the, the, the <coughs> thoughts that you have and the thoughts that you hold, what, what is the predominant thought that you're holding in your life? Is it on complaining? Is it on kvetching? Kvetching. Kvetching. Yeah, there you go. Kvetching, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Yeah, you know, it's, it's in the news. My goodness, the news. We are bombarded with so much that's happening in the world, and it's good to be informed. It's good to be informed. But we don't have to pitch a tent there, right? We don't have to pitch a tent and hang out there for hours on end, and I'm not s suggesting anyone is doing that. Some love to keep CNN on all day long, um, you know? And so when we pitch that tent and we hang out there. I was listening to, speaking of the news, I was listening to NPR uh, in my car last week, and I heard um, uh, a story about these individuals whose sole focus is to focus on hate crimes and investigate and oh, research yes. hate crimes. Can you imagine having a job like that? And that's what they do, and they were interviewed, and they were asking them, what is that like for you? And they were saying how it has impacted their lives to such a degree that they can feel this negativity in them, this pessimism in them, this anger in them, and it's impacting their marriages, it's impacting their families' lives, it's impacting everything that they do. And that's because they are immersed in it. They are surrounded by it on a regular basis. And so these are things that impact us, impact us energetically. And so if we, when you think about the universe, the universe is, is interesting. The universe constantly brings us things to help us to shift our perspective. Now, if we're watching the news, or we're experiencing something negative in our lives, or we're experiencing something challenging in our lives, we are being brought those things to us, and we always have a choice. We can allow those things to get us more upset, get us more angry, get us more worked up, or we can stop for a moment, close our eyes, take a breath, and move into our heart. I was watching over the weekend uh, a documentary, a wonderful documentary series about immigrant families who are being taken from their families and being sent back, deported back. Um, this one family was uh, from Mexico. Heart wrenching. As I'm watching this documentary, the tears are rolling down my face and I could feel also anger in me. Anger coming up. As I completed the documentary, I shut it off and it occurred to me, you know, as a, as a minister, I'm just like y'all, you know, I have those moments where I get caught up in it, but I could feel that anger, and I thought, you know, what else can I do in this moment? I went into prayer. I went into prayer. I could easily get so angry with why this is happening, what is causing this to happen, and, and I could have easily gone down that road. But instead, I went into prayer. And what I did is I held the vision that these families are being reunited with one another. I held the vision that they are, that, that, that what is happening right now comes to an end. That no longer, no other families are being taken away and being separated from each other. And so in those moments when you, when you can feel yourself being against something, whatever that is for you, what if you stopped? and held the vision of what it is you want versus what's not happening or what's missing. And all we need to do is slow down, take a breath, that's the first thing, <laughs> and just breathe, even if we just focus on our breath and move into our heart, it shifts, it shifts. You know, the universe is constantly conspiring to heal us to transform us. These things that show up, that trigger us, that get us going, it's an opportunity, isn't it? It's always an opportunity 
to get quiet and to envision something greater. I see this community expanding out and growing to 150, 200 people in the next three years. If you yes. read my article in the yes. newsletter, that is yeah, what I'm yeah. seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're not focused on what's missing. We have a small sanctuary. We, it's only room for 45 chairs. You know, we don't have this. We don't need this. I don't have an office. You know, I mean, I think we could easily do that. But instead, holding the vision of what we want, so much more powerful. When practitioners pray, when ministers pray, that is exactly what we do. Someone comes to us and they present to us a condition that they're struggling with. That's the first thing they do, and we receive that. But when we pray, we know that whatever ailment, whatever condition that they are holding, we are envisioning something greater for them. We do not focus on the condition. And that's, that's, what, that's what Jesus did. Our master teacher, that's exactly what he did. The, the ailments, the people came up to him with their ailments and their conditions and all of their stuff. He didn't see that. He saw their truth. He saw their truth. He saw what was possible for their life. All of us are on a journey back home. Back to the Father's house, to use a biblical reference. But in our teaching, we always look at it metaphysically. What that means is when I say return to the Father's house, it means return to the divinity that is within us. Return to that divine nature that is within each of us. And so when we are focused on something that we're against, and we are getting worked up about that, it's an opportunity to come back to home. Come back to that divine, beautiful spark of light that is within each of us. It takes practice, though, doesn't it? It takes a lot of practice. I'm a little more practiced because of my training, yes, but I, I have my moments too as I shared. And it takes discipline to make that choice in that moment to come back and to return to the Father's house, to return to that place within us. And over time, it gets easier. It gets easier. Do we want a world that works for everyone? Yes. Do we want a world that works for everyone? Yes. yes. <laughs> Yeah, and it starts with us. It starts with us individually. What can we do? What can I do in this moment? Holding that vision of peace. Holding the vision that our planet is healed. Holding the vision that our community is expanded and touching more lives. Holding the vision, whatever that is. We all have our thing that we get, Ugh. Yes, we all have whatever that is. And there's so much possible. A, there's a wonderful book called The Way of Mastery, and I brought this in. I haven't talked about it in a while. But this is a, a channel teaching similar to uh, The Course in Miracles. In my opinion, it's, much, it's written much, much better. And so you will hear me from time to time quote, I call him Jeshua because that was his name. He was not called Jesus. Um, and here's a beautiful quote from that. The universe is literally helping to assist you into having experiences that will bring things up for you so that you can choose to look at them differently, thereby discovering the great power within you, the freedom within you to choose what you want to perceive and to elicit only what you want to feel. This is the universe conspiring for us, always giving us opportunities to choose to look at something differently, to choose a different perspective. I want you right now to think of something, think of something that you're against, something that just gets you going, whatever that is, just bring to mind that thing right now. And if it helps to close your eyes and just feel it in your body, just notice, notice how it feels in your body when you are holding that thing. Let yourself just feel it. Let yourself feel it. Notice anything happening in your body. Just tune into your being right now as you're feeling that. And now letting that go. Poof. Releasing that. And now, opening your heart, bring to mind something you are for. Something that you are for. Allowing that into your heart, feeling that in your body. Notice how that feels.
Just notice that and feel that. <coughs> Okay, letting that go. Were you able to notice the difference? Can you notice the impact? Perhaps your heart was beating faster, slower, your heart felt more open, your chest felt more open. When you're holding on to what you're against, our bodies get tense. So if you can notice the difference in that, this is what happens. We don't even realize what's happening in our bodies when we get worked up like that. And if we stopped for a moment and closed our eyes and focused on our breathing, we would tune into that. And as soon as you have the awareness, then you have an opportunity to make a choice. So it's about recognizing <clears throat> what that truth is. What is the truth that we want to see? What is the possibility that we want to create? for our life, for the lives of others, for the lives of these beautiful families that are being separated from their loved ones, for the healing of the planet, mm -hmm. for the healing of all beings. Ernest Holmes said this, Through our thinking, we can bring into our experience whatsoever we desire. If we think correctly and become a living embodiment of our thoughts, this is not done by holding thought, but by knowing the truth. So it's practicing knowing that. When you're feeling yourself getting triggered by something, stop, take a breath. First thing, close your eyes, move into your heart. What, what is your vision for that? What is the greater vision that you want to see happen for your life or for this situation? And hold that. You're going to notice a difference in how you feel in a second. And not only that, but you are also contributing to the changes that are taking place on this planet. Do you get that? That your energy, by focusing on that, even for, even for two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, that actually goes out and it impacts our planet. It impacts whatever that situation is. That's how powerful prayer is. That's how powerful our energy is. That's how powerful our, who we are is. <laughs> so holding, holding that, holding that energy. So I'm going to ask you right now to, to, sh to speak out loud. <coughs> what are you for? <laughs> what are you for? Tell Healing. me. Life. Keep going. Love. 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 Joy. Joy. Um, what are you for? For the planet. Peace. Clean air. Clean water. Yeah. Abundant water. What else are you for? Democracy. Peace. What else? Love. Yeah. World. Understanding. Mm -hmm. What do you want to see? Compassion. Truth. World peace. I think everyone can be What do you want to see happen to our environment? Rejuvenation. Beautiful feeling. Yeah. What do you want to see happen in our government? share with you Centers for Spiritual Living Global Vision. This is a powerful series of statements that was created in 2016 centered around a world that works for everyone. So I want you to just, just take this in. 
We envision all people, all beings, and all life as expressions of God. We see a world in which every person lives in alignment with his or her highest spiritual principle, emphasizing unity with God and connection with each other. A world in which individually and collectively we are called to a higher state of consciousness and action. We envision humanity awakening to its spiritual magnificence and discovering the creative power of thought. A world where every person discovers his or her own personal power and ability to create an individual life that works within a world that works for everyone. We envision a world in which we live and grow as one global family that respects and honors the interconnectedness of all life. A world where this kinship with all life prospers and connects through the guidance of spiritual wisdom and experience. We envision a world where personal responsibility joins with social conscience in every area of the political, corporate, academic, and social sectors, providing sustainable structures to further the emerging global consciousness. We envision a world where each person has enough food, a home, a sense of belonging, a world of peace and harmony, enfranchisement, and justice. We envision a world in which resources are valued, cared for, and grown and where there is generous and continuous sharing of these resources. We envision a worldwide culture in which forgiveness, whether for errors, injustices, or debts, is the norm. We envision a world which has renewed its emphasis on beauty, nature, and love, and through the resurgence of creativity, art, and aesthetics. We envision a world that works for everyone and for all of creation, and so it is. So let's say the affirmation now together. You're now saying it coming from you. Really feel this in your body. I envision a world that works for everyone and for all of creation. Let's move into prayer. Practitioners, please stand in high consciousness. So yes, indeed, we envision a world that works for everyone and for all of creation. And I am knowing that these words, that these words are melting into our being, melting into our heart. I'm knowing that we, as we go out into this week, that we are recognizing those moments when we are filled with that angst, when we are filled with anger, and we are able to stop for a moment and to be able to shift that moving into our heart and being able to hold a greater vision for what we desire in our life, whatever that may be. And so I am knowing this, and I am speaking this, and I'm declaring this to be so. I'm knowing that this is a powerful group of individuals filled with that light, filled with that love, filled with the grace that is the divine, supporting us and guiding us to create and be a part of a world that works for everyone. And so I'm so grateful for the energy and for the love and for the dedication, for the commitment that is here. For I know that this is what all of us truly desire. And so I just let this go and I allow it to be, knowing it is so, right here, right now. And so we just all ground this in together by saying, and so it is.
dream to break, and the rains came in peace, spread over this land, and the flowers grew in the desert, and the air was fresh and clean. I dreamed of summer and the winds changed. The breeze was sweet and the air was so clean. I dreamed of summer and the winds changed in peace. Spread over this land. The rain came and peace spread over the land. I dreamed of heaven and the whole earth sang. Music was sweetest and we all could hear. I dreamed of heaven and the earth.
Short three minute prayer, I think they call that. Anyway, prayers. Two minute miracles. Two minute miracles, but it usually is a little. Oh, 